Do you want to kill uber bosses? Is it a dream of yours to be able to afford a build even 1 100th as expensive as Fubgun? Did you literally shit yourself trying to learn the leapfrog method or even just opening up the atlas? Well fear not, you've come to the right place exile. Path of Exile's endgame can seem so far away for most players. Finishing the campaign and hitting G to open your atlas is like being thrown into a metaphorical ball pit by your parents. Except you're not just finding your way out of the ball pit, you're finding your way out of the ball pit, out of the building, back home, and to your parents' house where you find them doing something unspeakable. But it truly doesn't have to be that way. The progression of PoE can easily be put in stages, which not only makes it easier to follow, but makes this video easier to make. That being said, while the previous video was made to be timeless to some extent, this video absolutely will not be, as GGG does tend to do some endgame reworks every year or so. But that shouldn't stop you from watching this video now, or me having the ability to milk this topic in the future. My tummy hurts. I'm gonna need a warm blankie and a cup of hot chalky. Path of Exile is like the dark souls of ARPGs, not because of anything gameplay related, but because there's always that subset of people who will say anything you do in any way is the wrong way. If you ever encounter these people in the wild, simply ask, what was your childhood like? And then once they begin trauma dumping to the first person who has ever showed them compassion, make sure to block them before ever reading what they have to say. And if it's the subset of people who think that the campaign is a waste of time to begin begin with and think, I should be allowed to just teleport to the end of the campaign and be level 70 because I've played through the campaign before. Then instead, ask them to seek therapy for their massive ego to where they think that the 3-4 to four hours is such a waste of time that they need to be able to skip it or else GGG will never see their $5 Subway gift card. Because unless you're popping out new characters like a southern Christian household, then spending 3-4 to four hours is truly not a horrible price to pay for the rest of the things mentioned in this video. I feel most people think this way because honestly, the campaign takes the most thought than any other phase in PoE. You need to constantly upgrade builds and gear so when people who are completely used to brain off mapping have to level a build without twink gear, they get a little upset about needing to think. The campaign will take a bit of time to get used to, but it's not horrible. Leveling a build is the most noticeable power jump in such a small span of time, as the little micro upgrades in the late game will be less noticeable. Early maps is like Campaign 2.0, where you still feel your power level increasing, but now you have the freedom to do whatever you want, as long as whatever you want is being forced to do awful layouts for Atlas progression. In this stage, you will be given a map. The idea is to clear the map and kill the map boss, while satisfying some conditions in order to gain a point for your Atlas tree. For white maps, you will need to make sure that the map is at least magic, so transmute at the very least. Keep doing this and getting other maps to mark them off your Atlas while working your way up to yellow maps. Yellow maps need to be at least rare rarity, so either alk or binding it and make sure that there are no mods that completely fuck your build. Yellow maps usually aren't too hard, so keep on keeping on and I suggest putting your atlas points into more map drop nodes since the main goal right now is to progress your atlas. If you ever run out of new maps to do, then talk to Kirik and buy some or do the Kirak missions on the map device. And as a little side note, opening a Kirak mission will reset Kirak's store. This part fucking sucks. So, if you noticed on your atlas, there is more than just white and yellows. Tier 11 through 16 are red maps, and holy fuck is getting them done just so awful sometimes. So for atlas progression of yellow maps, they needed to be rare. Well, for red maps, they need to be rare and corrupted. For the uninitiated, corrupted maps can be incredibly fucking scary. They can have downright horrible mods and you cannot edit a corrupted map. So this section is essentially getting lucky enough to drop a red map, making it rare, vol orbing it, and praying it doesn't just kill you six times. This is what I find to be the hardest part of progression. Bosses can be learned, but this part when builds are still coming together can be so rough, so don't get too discouraged if you do end up losing some maps. Go farm in yellow maps for some money, upgrade your build, and come back later. Uh, uh, find them randomly, use Kirak missions, do them. They're not that hard. So when you reach yellow maps, you will talk to the BBE, the big, beautiful envoy. 
and he will provide you with either a red or a blue compass modification. A new quest will come up that says to follow either the Eater of Worlds or Searing Exarch through some tiers of maps. It's pretty self-explanatory. Press the icon before you start the map, kill the map boss, move on. At tier 11, you'll be given a map that takes you to one of the first Atlas Pinnacle bosses. If you were following the Searing Exarch, it'll be the Black Star. If you were following the Eater of Worlds, it will be the Endless Hunger. Just, uh, kill the bosses, go look up guides if you need to, but they're really not that bad. After that, the quest will again have you chase the Martian men through more maps until T16s where you will be able to fully challenge them. Once you beat each one, you will be given two of your four void stones. Each void stone will upgrade all the maps on your atlas by five tiers when slotted in. And why do we want void stones? Cause sometimes your boy doesn't want to farm fucking castle ruins for endgame farming strats and so we can bring up the incredibly based city square or strand to T16s once we have enough void stones. <laughs> Around the same time you reach the BBE, you will also be told about Mommy Maven. I mean Maven, uh, just Maven. Maven is something you can select on your map to have her cuck, I mean, witness a boss fight, making it a little bit harder. Once enough are stored as indicated by the quest, you can challenge the Maven where she takes those bosses she witnessed and puts you all into a fight club. The first few ones just give Atlas points, but towards the end, you will obtain fragments to the Maven's writ. Once you get a full Maven's writ, challenge her, beat her brains out, and get your third void stone. Once you can regularly clear T16s and such, you can now start killing the Guardians. Guardian maps are special maps that lead to a special boss. That boss will then drop a fragment, which then leads to one of the other pinnacle bosses. If you're having trouble dropping them, there are these nodes on the Atlas tree that you can spec to just start farming the shit out of them so that you can farm the shit out of them. If we simply look at this nightmare flowchart, we see that killing the Phoenix, the Hydra, the Minotaur, and the Chimera will give you access to the Shaper. Killing the Eradicator, the Constrictor, the Purifier, and the Enslaver will lead you to the Elder. Killing Drox, Baron, Veritania, and and Al Hesman will give you access to Cirrus the Awakener. Killing the Shaper and the Elder several times will give you access to Uber Elder. Killing Uber Elder will give you your final Void Stone. In terms of progression, you're pretty much done. You got all your Void Stones and... Oh, no, 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 wait, 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 wait! Unfortunately for you, me, and 99% of the player base, GGG added in T17s. These maps are incredibly hard and irritating due to their absolutely horrendous mod pool and their pretty powerful bosses. These maps can only be dropped in T16s randomly, and beating them will grant you an uber fragment at random. T17s can be incredibly rewarding, but also will test your build like nothing ever could, introducing absolutely awful mods if you're lucky. And if you're unlucky, then the mods will simply brick your build instead. If you did not make an uber killer build, or you aren't playing the strongest of the strong, I'd say give them a shot, and if they aren't for you, then selling them has always been a great way of profit for me. You merely adopted the dark. Using uber fragments, you can challenge uber versions of the pinnacle bosses. These bosses have more HP, more patterns, and are just harder in general. You need a build designed to kill ubers to kill ubers. It's not really something most builds can just manage to do. It's also not for everyone. I've done one uber in my entire life, and I am doing just fine paying other people to do them for me. I can break these cuffs. You can't break those cuffs. This is pretty much the end of the video. You've unlocked all that you need to unlock and then some. Reroll, find some money making strategies, make and spend lots of money, upgrade your build. The world is now your oyster, so do whatever you want, but just remember to have fun while doing so. Stay safe and thank you all for watching.